Okay. Um, I get asked this question more than a few times, especially lately, and uh, recommending uh, some lenses which are rather hideously expensive and they're pinnacle quality. And uh, you'd think that, I don't know, photography magazines or people that uh, talk about photography, of course, nobody reads photography magazines anymore, do they? Like a Zeiss lens, a really, really nice Zeiss lens. And I've got some really nice Zeiss lenses. Um, chromatic aberration. Now, human beings, we don't like to see chromatic aberration. Now, here is the great irony. It's kind of like a nasty tasting medicine that's going to cure a sickness, right? It's like, well, it's gross. I would never eat it. Yeah, it's going to make you better. The, the nature of light and, uh, you know, visible light specifically, since we're talking about photography, between the red end of the spectrum and the blue end of the spectrum is that when glass, by the way, is a capacitor. This is an undeniable fact. I mean, Nikola Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, you know, it's a capacitor. Okay, and there is a, a lot of capacitors in a lens that uh, the uh, coaxial circuit that is light from the red end of the spectrum and the blue end of the spectrum pass through on its way to hit the sensor and register a charge. Light is not particles, by the way. That's an absurdity. That is uh, atomistic uh, nonsense thinking of GR and QM. So what about, uh, even though we hate chromatic aberration, why is it that the very best lenses, especially wide open, have some nasty, especially in a high contrast scene, like, you know, you got some dark green grass and a white flower, you got a really expensive Zeiss lens, and uh, you open it up to f1.4 or 1.8 or f2, whatever its maximum aperture is, or right above maximum, and you're like, wow, damn. This lens sucks. Look at this chromatic aberration. Well, let's explain that a little bit first. Okay, I don't know how many people, most people, when I was younger, we used to actually have 3D movies. You go, you still have 3D movies now, but um, you go into the movie theater, you put on the 3D glasses, and you'd watch stuff pop out of uh, the screen. And uh, see, if your lens, the expensive lenses that have this issue, it's like, why are the most expensive lenses have this horrific chromatic aberration it doesn't make any sense. Well, lens manufacturers now, uh, not meaning Zeiss, however, Zeiss is actually doing that now with the, uh, the Otis and the Milvis, which is a bad idea. Well, it fixes chromatic aberration, which you can fix in Lightroom, but you don't want to have to fix chromatic aberration in Lightroom. You don't want to have to fix it at all, right? Nobody does. That chromatic aberration is depth. That is a true disparity phase shift from the red end of the spectrum, the blue end of the spectrum, where the light actually arrives at the same place at different times, causes chromatic aberration issues. If your expensive Zeiss lens, or my expensive Zeiss lens, could talk to you, it would tell you that, like, you got uh, red and green fringing, or purple and blue fringing. I put on some red and green glasses, which nobody would do that, right? And print out a picture from the, a heavy chromatic aberration shot. You would see incredible depth. You know, this seems silly, me wearing these uh, goofy glasses. And these aren't actually 3D uh, glasses, but you know what I'm talking about. You would actually see incredible depth in your photograph. These expensive lenses are actually doing what they were designed to do. Wide open, high contrast. It's like, oh my god, look at the color fringing. Look at the chromatic aberration. On this, that is actual depth. It's just that us human beings don't like to see that. You and I know why we don't like to see that, because this is not what our eyes see uh, normally. By the way, this is what many insects do see. Many insects, of course, we're not insects, right? They do see this uh, phase disparity when they look at an object, like a flower or something. They'll actually see uh, multiple images of that flower in different colors. And when they actually zoom in to land on it, this is a proven fact, you know, butterflies and some other insects, when they zoom in to land on it, the actual uh, multiple images of that one flower, for example, will merge. So what these expensive uh, the damn lenses, and no one talks about this anywhere. This is the first time you'll ever hear it. It's from me. These expensive lenses have chromatic aberration, which we all hate. It's like, oh, I hate chromatic aberration. That's an expensive Zeiss lens. That, li that, is, that lens is too damn expensive to have chromatic aberration. Well, the secret is, is that while you like it, don't like it, and you know nobody else wants to see a print of nasty chromatic aberration, that high-quality lens is doing what a high-quality lens will do, is, pro is project true depth. These are low-element count lenses. 
lenses now are designed with multiple elements with the various uh, ED doping that causes the near end spectrum and the far end spectrum to merge so that light not only arrives at the same place but at the same time. See, so chromatic aberration is light arriving in a different place at the same time or uh, the same place at a different time. Either way, you end up with color fringing. Let me repeat that chromatic aberration. Got chromatic aberration issues where light, and this is the way light works because when light passes through a capacitor, the red end shifts at a different rate of phase than the blue end. This is just the nature, this is Mother Nature at work. The light will arrive at the same place, but a different time, or it will arrive in a different place at the same time. Either way, you end up with chromatic aberration. But the nature of the beast is, and this is the true irony, the true, the, the true uh, bailiwick, as I think the English would call it, the, the true uh, sticky, no, they say sticky wicket, right, or some sort of crazy English saying like that, is, is that is true depth. You don't want to see it, I don't, but that is true rendered depth. It's undeniable, it's irrefutable. But that horrible image, and just, no one's going to do this, but bear with me a second. That horrible chromatic aberration from that super expensive Zeiss lens, or that super expensive Leica lens, that like four element lens, or five or six element, those are all low element count lens. If you were to print that out, and you were to stick on the appropriate binary colored glasses like a picture of a flower or something with bad color fringing and you were to look at that printed out flower say in a 20 by 30 you'd go oh my god it looked like the flower was jumping off the frigging printed paper that that if the lens could talk to you it is saying dude i'm rending, rendering true awesome depth and this is the way insects actually see things but this is not the way humans see things. Humans don't see chromatic. When we got a pair of eyeballs, okay? We know because we have binocular vision whether we're near or far something and how close we are to it, unless, of course, we're missing one eye. But many insects don't do that. <laughs> so, this is kind of weird, and in a weird way, a lens, a really expensive lens, is kind of making an image the way an insect would want to see an image. That's not, that's not oddball, or in, that is absolutely 100% correct. And uh, <laughs> that is the explanation for why incredibly high quality lenses that are low element count, and people are trying to dial this out now as much as possible. Uh, because you can actually close the aperture down and basically eliminate that color fringing, or don't shoot uh, really high contrast scenes where like, you get a bright white flower against some black background. You know, the color fringing on the white flower is like enormous. But that is true depth of the rendered image, okay? And uh, I thought you'd find that fascinating. You may not find it fascinating. Some people actually have curious minds, and they like to know stuff like that. So, But that is the secret of chromatic aberration in ultra-high-quality, ultra-expensive lenses. And I've got more than a few of them. Most of them are Zeiss. Some of them are Voigtlanders. But that's the secret, and that's the answer to that secret. Okay? Like it or not, it's the way it is. <laughs> Bye.